everyone, uh, Robert Delgado here again, and uh, today's lesson number six, your values. Um, and I've left this uh, to last in the six-week course because, you know, to your values, we're going to see, is one of the most important things in your life. Knowing what your values are and making sure that there's alignment between your values and what you want. Um, and if you have the ability to realign your values, you can literally change your life in an instant. But to be able to do this, um, you have to be ready for it. And you need a, a couple of skills, which I've been teaching you in, in the videos before this. Um, and hopefully you've been doing some of the exercises that I've been giving you and you've been building these muscles, these mental and emotional muscles, because now we can use that skill set to shift, I believe, the thing that can have the biggest transformational effect on your life. Okay, so let's do this. So my question I started with was what controls the results we have in our life? Now, what determines our results? What determines whether we have an amazing business, whether we um, are happy, whether we are healthy, whether we are the ideal weight we want to be, whether we have good relationships. We all want certain results, but what determines it? Is it um, luck or is it something else? And it's basically this. Our results are based on our decisions. If you think about it, if you look in the mirror at your body right now, what that person looks like in the mirror is based on your consistent decisions and the actions that you've taken. Everything that you've put in your mouth, whether you've woken up in the morning and you've exercised or you haven't. If you look at um, your business or the quality of work you do, if you're an employee, everything is based on the decisions that you make. If you look at your relationships, everything is based on the decisions that you and your partner makes. So we make decisions and we take consistent actions and depending on what those decisions and actions are, we get certain results, either good or bad. So if I look at somebody, I can very, and I, I hear a little bit about them, I can very easily tell what decisions they make. Because all I have to do is look at their results and I know with certainty that they are making certain consistent decisions. If I may meet somebody that um, does not have the same results, I can then say with certainty, that that person is not consistently making the same decisions. Okay, so hopefully I've convinced you of how important this is of decisions and taking consistent actions. So the question is, what controls our decisions? What controls what decisions we make on a consistent basis? So we have decision and actions at the top. Beneath that, we have our thoughts and we have our emotions. So before any decision or any action is taken, there will be a thought, that thought will create an emotion, and then that emotion will drive a decision. What controls our thoughts? It's our beliefs. So what are our beliefs? Our beliefs are the lens we look at the world through. It's our perception of reality. It's how we, um, it's how we place or how we decide what's true and what's not. It's not really the truth, but we have emotionally held opinions. So our beliefs create our thoughts and our emotions, which then creates our decisions and our actions. But really what sits underneath all of those is your values. Okay, so you might be asking yourself, what actually are values? It's a word that gets thrown around a lot. And, and I, I mean, I've heard many people talk about it, but I didn't really understand it until relatively recently, and I'll define values as things that are important to you. It's our emotional needs. So if I ask somebody, okay, so what's the most important things in your life? They may say money is, or relationships are, you know, or my health is, or my status is, but it's not really those things that are important. It's the emotional needs that underlay that. It's the emotions that we think we will get by having those things. So for instance, your value is not money, your value is what you perceive money will give you. So maybe it's security, 
maybe it's a sense of freedom maybe it's a sense of calm and a sense of peace so you think if i have lots of money then i will feel calm i will feel peaceful i will feel secure i will feel free relationships as well the relationships not of value to you it's what you perceive you will feel so i will feel loved i will feel needed health is exactly the same so your values are your emotional needs how do you want to feel so what emotions are we looking for i've got a couple of examples there for instance money may give you freedom or status relationships may give you love what we, what we really value from a health point of view. We're not looking for health, we're looking for what health may give us, looking for energy. We may be looking for passion, we're looking for calmness. We will, do, we will find the motivation and the inspiration to do what it takes to fulfill our emotional needs. So, let me give you an example. You get two people, both of them um, have uh, very busy lives, and they both run successful businesses, they're both married, they both have two kids, um, they both have a lot of their on their plate. But the one person goes to the gym three times a week for an hour and looks very, very fit and very, very healthy. The other person does not. They're very unfit and they're very overweight. And if you speak to this person, they will say, I don't have time to exercise. If you speak to that person, they will say, I make time to exercise. Now, what is the difference? The difference is in this person, health or the feeling of fitness and energy and vitality is of high value. And if that's high on our priority list or high on our values list, we find the time, irrespective of the circumstances that we're in. If, let's use another example. If your business or money is of a higher value than say love you will find the time to work through the night to make sure that your business is successful but then when you asked if you've ever gone when was the last time you went on a date with your spouse you will say no we don't have time to go on dates that shows that your business or your success of your business is of a higher value than love now, there's no judgment of what your hierarchy should be. We have to choose this for ourselves. But I, the, what I need you to understand is that values are really emotional needs. And number two, we will find the time and find the resources to fulfill our values no matter what. The results in your life are based on your values. Now, think about this practically. Say I want to lose weight. And I'm desperate to lose weight, but I don't have health high on my values list. Say, if I look at my hierarchy of values, number one is business, number two is growth, number three is success, number four is um, love, uh, number five is passion, and down at number seven, eight, nine, or ten is health. Is it going to be possible for me to lose weight? No, because you consciously want the results, but you don't unconsciously value it enough so other things of higher value take its place. And hopefully I'm getting across how important this is, because if you want a different result in your life than you currently are having, then you better have a look at your values, because that's what's unconsciously driving your decisions. Your results in your life are based on your values. Okay, so... The other part of this, so we have our values, is we also have a set of rules for our values. So I learned this from Tony Robbins. And what rules for your values means, okay, so if I have a high value of success, what has to happen in order for me to feel successful? So it's very important to me, it's of a high value for me to feel successful, but what has to happen for me to feel successful? Okay, so... You know I love using myself as an example. So when I first went through this process and I was doing it one-on-one -on -one with, a, with a coach and um, we started putting down what my high, highest values were, in my top five was success. And um, 
No, but if I really am honest, it's status, you know. Um, and I thought to myself, okay, so success is high on my values. There's nothing wrong with that. But then I asked myself, what are my rules for feeling successful? And I wrote this down. People must tell me I'm successful. So people must come up to me and put me a patch on my back and say, Robbie, well done, you're so successful. I must be recognized as being successful. You know, other people must talk, talk about me to their friends and say, oh yeah, that, that Robbie guy, he's so successful. You know, at the highest level, I should be in magazines, I should be on TV. Um, people should know me as successful. I must win awards. I mean, when I look at this back now, it's actually embarrassing. But that is really my rules for feeling successful. Now, guess what? What do you think the chances are were of me feeling successful? Because the first question is, how often do those things happen? The second question is, do, are those things controlled by me or are they controlled by external factors? And you'll look, you'll see there that everything there is controlled by outside of myself. So what did that mean to me practically? I had a high value of feeling successful, but I never felt successful. Even though I had achieved quite a bit, I never felt successful because my rules were completely unrealistic. So I would push and I would push and I would push to achieve and I would achieve certain things, but I never felt successful and I always felt frustrated. So what was my dominant emotional state? Frustration. Because I had a high value, but my rules were not realistic. Let's look at freedom. That was also high on my value list. I can't remember the exact order, but freedom was up there. And then I asked myself, what does it mean? What does freedom mean? Okay, well, freedom means I can do what I want, when I want, with whom I want to do it. Okay, great. That sounds amazing. Um, so that's my rules for feeling free. Now, as a married person that runs a business, that sees people every day, that has two children and a lot of responsibility, what are the chances of me feeling free with rules like that? So did I ever feel free? No. I felt trapped all the time. The reality was I was free. You know, if I, I, you know, if I compare my life to the vast majority of people on the planet, I live an amazingly free life, but I never felt free because my rules were totally unrealistic. So you see how massive this is because these things not only control our actions, but if there's misalignment or if the rules are not realistic, it creates a negative dominant emotional state. And really, that's what your quality of life is about, is your dominant emotional state. The quality, the quality of your life is based on how you feel emotionally. I don't care what you have in your life. If you are um, feeling long-term negative emotions, the quality of your life is low, irrespective of what you've achieved or what you have. So what could be more important than, number one, finding out what your values are, number two, figuring out the hierarchy, and number three, figuring out what your rules are okay so let's look at the next one i had love as one of my highest priorities so what were my, my rules for love people must tell me they love me you know so i'm looking for people to tell me people must show me you know if it's my wife she must be affectionate to me she must do nice things for me um again yes that does happen not all the time, but is it controlled by myself or is it controlled by external factors? So what's going to happen with rules like that is I'm going to have expectations all the time of how certain people should behave in order for me to feel loved. And if it doesn't happen all the time, what happens? I feel unloved. Okay. Okay, so number one exercise of this is we're going to write down your seven values, your seven priorities, the emotional needs that you have. And your first question will be, well, how do I get those answers? You know now. 
you close your eyes, you start breathing slowly, you go into, you get out of your head and you go into your heart and you say, what are my emotional needs? What is important to me? You ask your inner wisdom and it will come out and you write it down. And you write down a list of between five to seven things. And then you put them in a hierarchy. And again, I'm sometimes asked, how do I know which one's more important? You just ask yourself. You have that list of seven things and you say, is that more important than that? Is that more important than that? Is that more important than that? And you shift things around until you start seeing a hierarchy. So what's of most important to what's less important. If it's in your top seven, they're all important. But your top three are going to be your major, major drivers. So currently, what are your values? So important, so amazing to finally figure this out. And then you write down your rules. Again, just ask yourself, what are my rules? If my, if my um, high value is um, freedom, what has to happen in order for me to feel free? And write them down, write them down. You can write a long list. For me to feel free, this has to happen. For me to feel loved, this has to happen. For me to feel passionate, this has to happen. So once you've got your list of your values and then your rules, you have a look at them and you start asking yourself some questions. Number one is, are these values in alignment with me achieving my vision or my dream in life? Remember, we've spoken about our vision in earlier videos. So ask yourself, are these in alignment? You know, if your vision is to, you know, be fit and healthy and have the ideal body weight and health is not high on your priorities or your values, is that in alignment? If you want to be a billionaire and um, growth or success is not high on your values or abundance is not high on your values, is that possible? If you want to find the man or woman of your dreams and have the most amazing relationship but love is not high on your values, there's, there's misalignment there. And then you look at your rules and you ask yourself how easily are they met? And is it, just, is it controlled by me internally or by external factors? Then you ask yourself, what values do I need in order to create my dream life? So you've got your values there and you can see that in that top seven, there's, there's some misalignment there. There's one or two things that are lower down that should be higher up that would be more in alignment with what you want to happen. And then you ask yourself, okay, so how would I reorder it? And are there one or two there that I should take out and put ones in? So, uh, for instance, if health is not in your top seven and you really want to be fit and healthy and look good, you might take want to take one out and put health in. This is I was speaking to somebody not so long ago about this and I said, you as a client, say you're a weight loss coach and someone comes in and they said, I've been trying to lose weight my entire life but there's this yo-yo diet I lose weight and then I gain back and then some. If you use this process and you taught people how to rearrange their values and you bring higher up in their hierarchy the things that they want in their vision, you can literally unconsciously program this person to get the results that they want. This is how powerful this is. So the rules, are they easily achievable and are they controlled by me or are they controlled by outside circumstances? So to explain this better, I'm going to go through my new values. So after I went through this exercise, um, I understood what my vision was, I understood what my purpose was, and I decided that growth should be my highest value. Now, my perception of this has changed a little bit because you may see in, in certain things I've put out recently, I now understand it's not really about growth, it's about revealing who I already am. Because myself, as everyone listening to this training, we're not broken. Our authentic true nature is whole and is infinite. So I may actually change that from growth to just revealing the highest version of myself that's already there. So why is that important? Because if I am teaching, if I'm trying to help people, if I'm trying to make people's lives better, I need to be expressing the highest version of myself. So I put growth at the top. Authenticity is number two. One of the comments I get a lot of times from people is they say, you're so um, honest, you're so authentic. I never used to be like that. My 
highest value used to be status. So can you imagine how much I hid from people because status was so important? But when I reordered it and I created authenticity as a high value, I became an open book. And what's happened now is I'm able to connect with people so much more because I'm not wearing a mask anymore. Then number three was fulfillment. I want to be fulfilled. I want to have this feeling of fulfillment and of satisfaction. And this was came from my purpose where I, dis, I, I understood that that's really what most of us want. We just want to live a meaningful and satisfying life. So fulfillment must be behind my values. Success is still there. But my rules for success are very different. And love is obviously still there. I don't want to... Um, destroy my marriage for the sake of my business. And if love is not in my top five, that is exactly what's going to happen. I'm going to spend all my time and all my resources into growing and being authentic and looking for fulfillment, and my relationships are going to fall by the wayside unless I have love as one of my top values. Okay, so you might be asking yourself, first of all, how do you now change your values? Okay. But let's first go through rules. So if I look at my old rules, so let's, let's, let's just actually go through to the new rules. So I've said I had growth at the top of my values. And then I decided what rules do I want to have for growth? And it must be easy to accomplish. And it must be controlled by me, not by external circumstances. So these are the rules I created. I experience growth every time I experience life. So the mere fact that I'm experiencing life means that I feel like I'm growing. I experience growth every time I face a challenge. So whenever something happens to me and I have to deal with it, I automatically feel like I'm growing. I experience growth any time I learn something. So I could pick up a book now and I could read something that I don't know and I can feel like I'm growing. I experience growth anytime I make progress in anything. For instance, the fact that I am completing this video that you are now watching means that I feel like I'm growing because I'm making some type of progress. I experience growth every time I'm even thinking. So you see how my rules now, not only are they so easy to accomplish, but number two, they're all controlled by me. So the only, now that I had figured this out, now that I had put growth at the top and I had made these easy rules, I just had to condition this in my mind and that's what's going to be our next step. <clears throat> so the conditioning process, how do we reorder our values in our mind? And everything we've been going through in the previous six modules is bringing us to this. Because when to reorder your values, we need to be able to get into a really high state. So we've spoken about state conditioning and we need to get to a high state, a high level of emotion to reorder our values. And that's why it's so key to do state conditioning on a daily basis and lifting your state up to 10 and above. So you can use that ability now to rewire the values in your mind. So how we say it is, or how we program it is very simple. We use the term I, we say my name, am and then we say the value so i robert delgado am growth i experience growth every time i experience life i experience growth every time i come up against a challenge i experience growth any time i make any progress in anything i experience growth um, any time i learn something so it's i am Whenever we say I am, it's extremely powerful. Saying your name is even more powerful. So in the conditioning process, you're saying, I, Robert Delgado, am growth. And you can see there's that certainty, just similar to what we did with the limiting beliefs. And then we talk about our rules. I experience growth every time I. I experience growth every time I. I experience love every time I. So this is what I, I, the affirmation I created. I, Robert Delgado, am growth. I experience growth every time I experience life. I experience growth every time I, I face a challenge. And I, I rewired my brain and I changed my hierarchy of, hierarchy of values and I changed the rules. 
So this is the sequence. You're going to take your, and I would say start with the top three, because the top three values are the ones that have the biggest impact in your life. So write down your top three values in the order that you want them to be. Write down the rules, the rules that you want, and for 15 minutes a day, you go through those top three values, saying what I've told you to say in a high, high state. Again, this is something you may want to do when people aren't around you because you want emotion, you want like certainty, you want to be in this high state. I mean, I remember when I was doing it, after about five or six minutes, I would start like beating my chest and like jumping around because I would build myself so up. The higher the state you get to, the more ingrained it gets into your brain. Now, let's just talk about how big this is. Because I've said this in previous trainings, the secret to life is that we understand your outer reality matches your inner reality, your inner state. So the be, do, have principle. It's not about when I have this, I'll be able to do this and then I will be happy. It's actually the other way around. It's your state of being first. That is the secret that I discovered and the secret I will tell everybody that is listening to me. Now with values, imagine this. Imagine if your state of being was that you always felt like you were growing. You always felt like you were authentic. You always felt fulfilled. You always felt successful and you always felt loved. Imagine if you reordered your values so that that was your dominant state. How would that change your life? If my dominant state was that I always felt fulfilled, I always felt loved, I always felt like I was growing, I always felt successful, I always felt authentic, my external environment would start to change around me. So for instance, let's use another example. Let's say success. Imagine your, your rules for feeling successful. Like, I feel successful anytime I accomplish anything that I do. So if I need to write a letter and I accomplish it, I feel successful. I feel successful anytime I teach someone something. That means that anytime I have a conversation with someone um, and I teach them something that may impact their lives, I feel successful. So what happens then? I feel successful most of the time. I feel abandoned most of the time. I feel fulfilled most of the time. And then my external environment starts to match that. So since I did this, I still have negative emotions. I still have problems. I still have my ups and downs. I still beat myself up sometimes. But my dominant state is that I feel as if all my needs are met. Whereas before, I always felt like my needs weren't met. No matter what I did, my needs were never met. So there was this frustration and this lack feeling my entire life. Now, even when things are not going so well, and I may be angry, frustrated, I may be anxious, whatever, I still feel as if my needs are met. And what greater gift you can give someone, I don't know. If you can teach somebody how to walk around on this earth feeling successful and fulfilled or whatever it is that is important to them and then they, they can then go out and achieve what they want to achieve in that state that is one of the greatest gifts you can give someone and since I did this I, I, I'm calmer I'm happier I'm way more authentic with people I connect better with people it really has completely transformed my life and all I did was reorder the way my brain processed information. So, uh, that is the end of video number six. And I am, um, let me just do this again. I will end off by saying this. What I would highly suggest that you do is once you've finished these exercises for lesson number six, is go back to lesson number one and start again and start just putting in the discipline putting in the time and and make a commitment to yourself that for the next few weeks at least you're going to spend a good 30 minutes 30 to 45 minutes a day working on yourself and just go through, through module one to module six 
do the exercises, take a pen, and, a pen or a pencil and write it out, do it over and over again, do your state conditioning, do your goal conditioning, or your vision conditioning every single night, connect with your purpose as much as you can, when you find a, a limiting belief, destroy that limiting belief, more limiting beliefs will come up, and when they do, get rid of them, it's okay to fear th feel fear and it's okay to have some limitations but don't let it stop you and then finally go to your values and reorder them and put them in alignment with what you want in life and I can I can say with absolute confidence that if you put in the time and the discipline to do this you will experience with the, uh, the top 1% experience and that is you can achieve whatever you want in this world and you feel completely and profoundly fulfilled along the way. So I uh, thank you for going through this training with me. I really hope that you found value. I would love your comments on it. And once you go through this, send me an email or a message. Tell me what you've thought about it. Um, and I wish you all the best. I will be in contact with you over time, but I wish you all the best on this journey of creating the life that you want. And I want you to understand this. I don't care what you've done. I don't care who you are. You deserve to have the life of your dreams. Bye-bye.